one size does not fit to all. So we all know, understand that, you know, uh, uh, people, everybody sitting in the hall cannot have a similar size of, of shirt, similar size of trousers. The same is the case with medicine as well, because we all are discussing today since morning the basics uh, and, and beyond. So acute myocardial infarction, as we all know as a physician, that is basically the most devastating atherosclerotic coronary artery disease. And time is muscle in this is disease because as the time is rushing on, we have to tackle these patients. And as a, as a clinician, as a cardiovascular physician, as a treating internist, we all understand that acute coronary syndrome is a bigger terminology for all these patients. And patients of acute coronary syndrome, they can present as a non-ST elevation MI or an ST elevation MI. Though ST elevation MI thought to be a little more dangerous, but that's not the case always. And non-ST elevation MI is where the troponins are raised as a biomarker with a acute chest pain is similarly same uh, abnormalities are there. How can we differentiate between STEMI and non-STEMI? We all know that the ECG abnormality of ST elevation and the troponin levels are highly raised. These are the, the, the most extreme part of an acute coronary syndrome which is most dangerous as well. And the pathophysiology changes, why? Because the, the atherosclerotic plaque which gets ruptured leads to, you know, there is a complete thrombus formation when there is a clot formation in a st STEMI case, whereas in non-STEMI, there is a partial clot resolution and there comes no, a role of uh, anticoagulation and dual antiplatelet. But the thrombolytic therapies are important for STEMI cases. We were discussing just now in the, in the previous hall the difference between uh, women and men in their diabetic management and diabetic uh, complication. And here is the cave as STEMI also because whenever we are looking for the STEMI patients, why the all STEMI patients are not same? Because we have to risk stratify them. Few of them may be having a low risk, but few of them may be having a high risk. It depends upon their time of presentation. You know, the time of presentation is the most important aspect because at the time of presentation, even the patient may, may have a negative acute coronary syndrome, patient may have a negative biomarker, but if you repeat it after three hours, because many times what we see as a clinician and, and our junior resident may see a patient of chest pain and do their troponin immediately, troponin will be negative and they refer the patient as a non-cardiac and refer them back. But these patients, they need to be observed in a chest pain chest pain clinics or a chest pain or, you know, holding centers and we need to see as a troponin levels after three hours. If it is positive, we have to look for the ECG changes as well as, you know, different other, other things as a risk stratification. So why one size can't fit, you know, to all of, of our patients of STEMI because there are patient variables, there are different type of patient. Transportation issues are the biggest problem nowadays in our country different types of hospitals. Now, you know, the, the trials which have been done, studies have been done in our own country of, uh, in Tamil Nadu regarding the STEMI India program. There are different types of hospitals, and we all understand that most of our hospitals are not PCI capable all the time. Even those who are having PCI facilities, they can't do it 24 into, into 7. Time from the symptom onset, when the patient reached to you, what was the time when the symptom chest pain has started? Because time is the most important part of STEMI management. Cost issue, patient came to us in a, in, a, in a window period of less than 120 minute, but the patient doesn't have a penny in their pocket. And most of the time as an interventional cardiologist, if we have to take the patient, we have to take it, you know, on our own risk, and the patient will be able to pay or not in a city like Varanasi from where I used to come up. Social problems, you all must be hearing and looking into the social media regarding the, you know, regarding the trauma, regarding the, the issues, regarding the, uh, violence which patients are doing because STEMI patients, they are prone to die any time within next 24 to 70 hours because of arrhythmic events. Patient attendants, they are always violent, their expectations are high. Different clinical status as all STEMI are not same. So if a STEMI patient comes to you, when and what to treat? Are they stable? Are they in shock? How to treat? Whether we should give a pharmacotherapy or should take them for a technical, you know, PCI? systems of care in primary PCI. Most of us being a cardiologist also are unable to do a primary PCI in cities like Varanasi and others. Why? Because 
I mean, they didn't come in time. If they come in time, the, the finance is the biggest issue. So pharmaco invasive approach or fibrinolysis and pharmaco invasive strategy is still the important aspect. So if I have to, to manage my STEMI patient, my roadmap will be the choice of reperfusion strategy. This is the most important aspect. If the patient is going to a PCI capable hospital, the management will change. Going for a non-PCI capable hospital, that we will definitely like to follow a pharmaco invasive strategy. Medical management is always an important aspect of STEMI and we have to take our medical you know, drugs in a proper doses. Management of complications are important and risk assessment post MI and post STEMI and post hospital discharge is, is equally important. So the, as I said that the time is much than the patient delay in the management is the most important aspect. And suppose the patient's the first medical contact which is there with with uh, the patient and the healthcare professional. And that time is very, very important. So from first medical contact, uh, the, the time clock starts and we need to see what is the symptom onset and what is the, what the first time when the patient is, is com coming to the healthcare professionals. So th we all face these problems in our management of STEMI in our clinical practice regarding from self-medication, lack of awareness that STEMI, they behave like it's a gas formation delay in a call for medical at attention or ambulance, transportation difficulties, poor trained paramedics, poorly equipped ambulances, lack of primary PCI facility, and so on. But you will look into this right side of the slide, there is a time when, you know, when the patient starts STEMI and you diagnose by doing an ECG, the first 120 minutes is very, very important. And that is a real important time if the patient come to a PCI capable hospital that is the important time. Alta, alta is, is the patient can be, can be diagnosed at that moment by a, an ECG and alert to, to transfer to PCI capable hospital. It is better to do a primary PCI in this 120 minutes of window period. If we are unable to do that, but then don't leave the patient. Don't you know, do anything and just give antiplatelet therapy and refer the patient. Thrombolize the patient, that's the main and the most important aspect of management of STEMI in country like us. Why? Because fibrinolysis is the most important part in our country and pharmaco invasive strategy is, is still the most important part. If you thrombolize the patient as early as possible and then transfer the patient to PCI as a capable center, that's really very, very important aspect. And there, the, they, within next 20 hour, 24 hours or so, the patient can be taken up for, P, for PCI if it is required, or if the patient is not able to pay, they, they can be still to manage with the medical therapy, and we can see that whether the, the thrombolysis was effective or not. Uh, STEMI care in India was, was first, uh, you know, very well studied in, a, uh, in the STEMI pilot study from Tamil Nadu, uh, where they have, you know, taken all the spoke and hub hospitals, and they have followed this program that from the diagnosis at the, of uh, uh, STEMI in the ambulance, they are for paramedics, they can send the ECGs to the, these uh, uh, spoke and hub uh, uh, hospitals, those who can, if they are capable of PCI, they immediately they can be transferred to PCI capable hospitals and the PCI can be done. If, the, if, the, if they're coming at the odd hours and PCI cannot be done, even the pharmaco invasive strategy means doing an, intervention within 24 hours may be the other best possible type of care. So what the STEMI guidelines says, I take it with an example like a 56 year old male coming to the hospital within two hours, that is 120 minute of onset of chest pain. This is a period if the patient comes to you and the PCI capable hospital is there, the best way to treat this patient is do a PCI to this patient. ECG shows an ST elevation in anterior lateral lead, blood pressure is stable, heart rate is stable, he is not in shock, is a past smoker with a past medical history of hypertension. The ECG looks like that. There's an ST elevation in one AVL, V1, V2, V3. Uh, These slides were not running, but the angiogram shows that you know, there was a, uh, uh, there's a 80 to 90 percent stenosis in left anterior descending, as well as RCA both. The two arteries are involved, but the culprit artery was LAD. And many times we face this problem that what to do if the patient comes with two arteries, severe obstruction, and am I occurring in, in one of them? So the question comes to us that whether we should treat the one infarct-related artery only 
or we go for both of the arteries, those are having critical lesion, what antiplatelet therapies should we give, how long should we give. And these are the two you know, important slides which will give you the whole lot of you know, uh, how to manage a STEMI and the STEMI guidelines reality. That if the STEMI is confirmed and the patient goes to a PCI capable hospital, load with aspirin, clopidogrel or ticagrelol, and with the, if the person is having first medical contact to device time is less than 120 or two, uh, 120 minutes or two hours, and they can afford a primary angioplasty, which definitely cost in a, any private hospital not less than 1.5 lakh rupees. Government hospitals, they, do, they can do it within 50, 60,000 rupees. If yes, the primary PCI is the best possible management. If no, then thrombolytic therapy, don't, if, if no, if the patient cannot afford a primary angioplasty, it doesn't mean the patient can't do anything. Thrombolyze the patient immediately and, and that will give the real benefit. Thrombolysis and followed with, you know, uh, unfractionated heparin or a low molecular weight heparin. Which drug you will prefer as a thrombolytic therapy? Definitely, I will prefer for my own patients, uh, you know, second or third generation thrombolytic therapies like tenecteplase, retiplase, LTplase, because they have got a better, you know, arterial uh, TME grade 3 flow and lift gives a better survival as well as the less amount of damage. So even the patient cannot afford it, at least gives streptokinase of 2,000 rupees if they can have going to have at least some effect. If the patient is not in a PCI capable hospital, at least load with aspirin and, do, and dual antiplatelet. If there's no contraindication to thrombolysis, thrombolyze them. If yes, high risk STEMI or cardiogenic shock or heart failure, refer them to primary PCI capable hospital. If if, within, if it patient comes to you more than three hours of the first medical contact and it is less than 120, still you, patient can go for primary PCI. But if, if it comes after two hours, then definitely within less than 24 hours, you can thrombolize them if the patient is having chest pain ongoing. Definitely after 12 hours of window period, uh, the, the effectivity doesn't uh, stand good. But if it is less than three hours, it may be as effective as primary PCI. So thrombolysis is very, very good. And if the thrombolytic therapy will tell you, and there are few parameters that you can judge whether the patient is having a successful thrombolysis or not. If the patient is having a successful thrombolysis, the patient can still afford to go for primary angioplasty, transfer the patient to PCI capable hospital and angioplasty, or at least coronary angiogram can be done within the next 24 hours. This is regarding the uh, uh, STEMI patient protocol due to window period after 12 hours. Suppose patient comes to you after 12 hours, a late presentation, then these patients, if they're having hypotension, heart failure, electrical instability, these are the patients who require, you know, intervention and they should be referred to a hospital for CAG. And if the culprit artery is, is, is still having some lesions which are really to be, to be revascularized, it has to be done. If the patient is stable after 12 hours, you can manage them medically and you can patient make them, a, you know, assess the pre-discharge probability whether is any amount of ischemia is there. If the pre-discharge probability shows a high risk probability for ischemia or viability, take them for a coronary angiogram and these patients, they require an intervention. If it is negative, you can follow them on medical therapy. So those who are coming even after 24 hours, this was the, the slide which I, I was showing you. If the CAG reveals 100% occlusion, because many times we have seen the patient coming to you after 24 hours, we did his angiogram because the patient ejection fraction was less than 40%. If they're coming less, after 24 hours, the ejection fraction is less, you have to do their angiogram and see what is their anatomy is. If it is 100% occluded, there's no benefit doing an angioplasty in that patient, at least assess the viability, whether the patient has got a viable myocardium or not. If the subtotal occlusion of the infarct-related artery, we can take them for angioplasty. If the patient is not high risk or EF is not less than 40, we can do a pre-discharge evaluation. This is for STEMI in less than 12 hours and 12 to 24 hours. Uh, we all can understand that there are two groups, thrombolyzed and non-thrombolyzed, and it depends upon the PCI facility. And why we are thinking of, you know, this time duration? Because there's a difference between a non-STEMI and STEMI. Non-STEMI, there's a, the medical management versus interventional management doesn't have too much of uh, differences, but in STEMI, you can see as the time passes, the mortality increases. There are a few important uh, uh, terminology which have 
been discussed because but with the paucity of time i'm not discussing it here these are the questions uh, these are the recommendations regarding reperfusion therapy by the european society uh, which i have already discussed with you in a in a, in a bar diagram so the adjective therapies are definitely important and antiplatelet therapies are re really important a loading dose needs to be given for a clopidogrel of 600 mg followed with 75 prasugrel of 60 mg followed with 10 and if the patient is using ticagrelor it should be given so it is very difficult to uh, to to take on stemi uh, assessment and management in 15 minutes so i have summarized those important points but uh, i just want to add to I, i will just take uh, another 2 minutes or so routine medical therapies are equally important for stemi patient regarding beta blockers but it should not be given to all patients and an intravenous beta blocker has got no role we should avoid in patients you know those who are having heart block and ha and severe lv dysfunction renin angiotensin they are class 1 indication and this uh, mrs or epinephrine or aldectone are also uh, important lipid management has already been discussed oxygen nitrate and ccbs are required but oxygen is required when the patient is having less than 90% ventricular arrhythmias needs to be managed icd therapy doesn't required immediately but for the arrhythmia those are having after 48 hours bradi arrhythmias needs to be managed and pericarditis after stemi has, has a role of aspirin in in managing them and Uh, class 2b c for acetaminophen and colchicine blood sugar monitoring is very very important by the nice sugar guidelines and it is said that tight glucose control of 80 to 108 is an important uh, part risk strategy we can do it by sub maximal exercise test and uh, now coming to the the important parts and and the Uh, the cardiac rehabilitation principle that we should not leave all our cardiac uh, stemi patients without advising them for a cardiac rehabilitation so to summarize my my points of stemi management uh, what i mean to say that stemi are the most critical phases of acs and patient in india and uh, uh, patient or in uh, india the acs have higher rate of stemi so we have to take care of them particularly pharmacological treatment is as important and pharmacology pharmaco invasive strategies pre hospital thrombolysis are equally good patient awareness education and plan of action we have to make them educated we have to advise them how to 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 behave post stemi and their their routine managements physicians plan of action should be time dependent as we all know that stemi time is muscle immediate ecg in the patient of suspected mi to confirm stemi avoid delay systemic protocol and pharmaco invasive concept of acs is very very important so as we all understand that you know medicine doesn't mean a coronary intervention medicine doesn't mean a pharmaco pharmacological treatment as well medicine means a practice of of a trial of patient skill knowledge and place of practice so as i am practicing at a very small place as a cardiologist can't do you know uh, all the science which i know it so the logic will get you from a to b but our imagination sometimes take us everywhere so i end up with my talk thank you all and sorry to extend my my time limit so thank you all for for your patient hearing